Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to continue the example we started according to the Eurocode 1992 part 4 which is quite close to ACI 318 chapter 17. We assumed uh, a given load in the design phase is applied to the top of a concrete wall with the thickness of 400 millimeter. And then we went through the introduction and in this video, we are going to determine the tension force and also the length of the concrete under the embedded plate, which would be under compression. Let's do so. Now we have the required information, how to sketch our case and how to determine the tension and compression in concrete. Let's continue with our example uh, to determine the tension forces in this video and then we will continue for other checks in the other videos. So in our case we have 300 millimeter plate and in the distance of 60 millimeter from each side we have our anchorage bolts. In the center of the plate the bending moment is given as 20 kN meter and the normal force is 120 kN. The distance between these two, it was S1, 180 millimeter, and C is, or the edge distance of the plate is 60 millimeter. It's obvious that if there is any tension coming to the bolts, bolts in the, uh, on the right side will be under tension. So in the first trial, we can assume that this distance from the left is going to be under compression. We call this X and then the bolts on the right side will be in tension. Now we can sketch the strain deformation for our plate epsilon C, epsilon S. Here we do not have other epsilon as for the steel as far as we assume only one row of the steel is in tension. If you have more uh, tensile anchor bolts then we have epsilon 1, 2, 3. Let's name these uh, distances. This was x and this will be 240 millimeter minus x. By the similar triangle principle we can write down the relation between epsilon c and epsilon s. So epsilon c divided by x will be as same as epsilon s divided by 240 minus x. And as far as the linear relation between epsilon c and epsilon s can be utilized for this example, we can write epsilon c is fc divided by ec, considering that fc is the maximum compressive stress in concrete. And epsilon s will be f steel divided by e s. So f steel is the tensile stress in steel. Substituting the equations in the basic ones, so Fc divided by Ec times x will be Fs divided by Es times 240 minus x. And then we can write down that Fs will be Es divided by Ec times 240 minus x divided by x times Fc. Uh, x is unknown. A steel tension is unknown. Compressive tension in concrete is also unknown. But we have one equation for now, the relation between a steel tension and concrete compression. Then we can continue with the tensile force in the steel, which can be calculated according to the steel tension times area of the steel. So if we recall, the diameter of the anchor bolt was 16 millimeter according to the technical manual of PECO or other diameters that you are just welding some bolts in the back of a plate, put it in the concrete. So it will be 16 millimeter Fs Es divided by Ec times 240 minus X divided by X times Fc times pi 16 millimeter S squared divided by 4. And also in the concrete uh, compression force will be 0.5 fc times b times x 
B represents the width of the plate that we are using. In this case, B is 300 millimeters. So now we can see that tension force is a function of X and FC. Concrete compressive load is also a function of FC and X. So we have mainly two unknown parameters. Now, if we come back to our question and apply the load in the center, so here we will have the concrete compressive triangle stress distribution and in the other side we have only the steel taking the tension and what we calculated is the concrete compressive force and tensile force in the steel to have the equilibrium for this uh, load arrangement we need to write down two main equations first of all the summation of the loads in vertical direction needs to be in balance as a result sigma if y equals to zero then we can find out that cc minus t needs to be the same as n and also we can take bending moment about point a to be zero so m plus n times if you remember this distance to the next anchor bolt was s1 we can name this part it's in the one direction but if we write c1 perhaps it is uh, confusing compared to the distance of anchor bolt center to the edge of the concrete so i would write this is cs1 and this is also cs1 so now continue with the bending moment equation m plus n times s1 divided by 2 minus cc times s1 plus cs1 and this is x divided by 3 one third of x as far as it is triangular stress distribution so it will be minus x over 3 equals to 0 so here we can see that we have two main equations for equilibrium and we have two unknown fc and x you might say that if we have more than one row of uh, a steel in tension what happens in that case so if you have several rows you have this equation this relation according to the uh, similar triangles principle uh, that you can find out if s1 2 3 it doesn't matter according to the given equation finally you will have only two unknown parameters if you have only bending moment about one axis if you have two bending moments then it will be a little bit different because you need to write down uh, the equation in the other direction then you will have three parameters unknown parameters x in one direction x in the other direction and also fc which is the maximum compressive stress in concrete so the only thing that we need to consider is the solving this equation before we continue it is important to notice that this t and here this t needs to be written as the summation of t's it means that if we have only one anchor bolt then it's only for one but here we can see that in this equation we consider a steel area as one anchor bolt but here we have two so better writing option is sigma tension in both cases so in this case you would not miss the effect of other anchor bolts so from here we can continue with matcat that might be easier to approach the results and we can see how to write a matcat code for solving this type of questions so what do we have we have a, a steel diameter dimensions everything so let's start with b of the plate you can go with b or b p it's fine b of the plate is 300 millimeter l of the plate is also 300 millimeter thickness of the plate might not be required at the moment we will enter that information later s1 is 180 millimeter and s2 if needed is also 180 millimeter as far as we have l and s1 we can calculate c s1 is l of the plate i assume that l is always in the direction of the shear force minus s1 divided by 2 and also c s2 
is b of the plate minus s2 divided by 2. So in this case, we need to assume what kind of concrete do we have. Let's assume that we have C3037. So FCK will be 17 megapascal. And a steel, E of the steel can be taken as 210 gigapascal. And also you can take a concrete modulus of elasticity directly from the Eurocode 1992-1-1. For modulus of elasticity of concrete, you can take as the simplified value given in this code 1992 part 4 as 30 gigapascal. Or you can directly take the value from the Eurocode 1992-1-1, uh, which for C3037, the value of E c is given as 33 gigapascal so you can either select one of these two methods so there are plenty of good videos for concrete structure design according to 1992 11 uh, that you can find the playlist in the uh, channel so what else do we need so we need to have the diameter of the anchor bolts b of the steel is 16 millimeter and you can write down, for example, number of steel in one row or, for example, N steel 1 or L steel 2. So here we have only two steels. Uh, now we need to write down the relation between FC and FS. Uh, let's come back to here. You don't need necessarily to come to this point. You can just have the relation between FC and FS from this uh, equation so let's have this one for starting point f of the steel it's a function of f of concrete and x which is e of a steel divided by e of concrete times this 240 millimeter is 180 plus cs in one direction so if you want to have a dynamic code it is easier if you write down s1 plus or let's go this way s1 plus c s1 minus x then divided by x and multiply by f c so this is the relation between f s and f c and x the next one is to write down that t individual anchor bolt is determined by multiplication of a steel tension times area of the steel so for that we need to calculate area of steel first area of steel is pi times p of steel s square divided by 4 this is only for 1 then we will consider the number of the reinforcement intention in the main equation so t as uh, a function of fc and x is fs times as and then c of concrete is also a function of fc and also x it's half of fc 0 0.5 times fc times b of the plate times x then we need to write down two equations and solve these two for the x and fc so for this you can use the solver block and you need to have a guess value so x guess uh, you can go with the values but if you go with the values then perhaps if you change your code later on it might not work properly for that it is better if you have a dynamic guess for example if b of the plate is 300 millimeter let's start with one third of the plate width so one third of b plate so it gives you the opportunity that whenever you are changing anything for this code, it is uh, directly updated according to the uh, plate width. Also, FC can be also dynamic. Let's go with uh, FC guess. It can be a dynamic value according to the uh, concrete class. So if you have 17, for example, half of fck might be a good start these are the guess values then we need to write down the equations so here we have the equations as constraint so cc minus t 
and it should be multiplied by the number of uh, a steel in one row so here we defined number of steels so number of steel one equals to the normal force let's go with neb so here we need to define what neb is and also med 20 kilonewton meter and let's have also shear force for now the other constraint is the moment equation so med plus NED times S1 divided by 2 minus CC times S1 plus CS1 minus X divided by 3 equals to 0. So here, when you are writing the equation, constraint should contain the same guess values. So if you solve this for FC and X, you might see that it is not working. So it is important to change these values to guess values. So then you can just copy these and put for all of the parameters here. Also, it should be the guess value. Hopefully nothing is uh, missed and we can have our solution so the only thing is just solving i will go with answer equals to find fc guess and x guess so it's done and we have the results we can find out fc guess and x guess by writing answer equals then you will see these two but I would suggest instead of that, I will go with the other approach because now we have an array for the results. So I will write down that FC is equal to ANS. And then here from the matrices, you can find out the index. So it will be uh, zero because uh, the origin by default is set to be zero. So if I just write down, you will see that megapascal it is 9.45 and then x equals to answer again you can find out what the shortcut is so here you can find out the shortcut and this is one so in millimeter 106 millimeter what is important here check if the left anchor bolt is under tension or compression so here we have 106 millimeter uh, distance for x and if we come back to our uh, plate we can see that the distance needs to be greater than the cs1 here you can write down a cross check of your assumption for example x needs to be greater than by your assumption for this example greater or equal to c s1 and just you can check that this is valid so you can put it somewhere here to easily check your dynamic code that okay now i assume that the left anchor bolt will be in tension here also you can write if clause so uh, that how how you see a text it gives you the answer by a text so what we need to determine is the tension force in the anchor bolts T of steel and in kilonewton so it is 15.26 kilonewton as the tension force coming back to just our code I can copy and put the screenshot from this calculation to be used later now this should be checked to be less than FCD also we need to continue verification of the plate and anchor bolts with these value so we can just write down the results and continue in the other video for the calculation and confirmation of our anchor plate so here the force is 15.3 kilonewton and this is the starting of verification which i will continue in the next video that was the end of this video we determined the tension force due to the bending moment applied to the top of embedded plate and we will continue to verify the uh, embedded plate and anchor bolts in the next videos thank you for watching see you next time bye